Hi, everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about um, chapter 14, which is about money and banking. Um, also, I wanted to mention that we are um, almost three weeks away from Thanksgiving week. So um, next week, we're going to study chapter 13. Then we're going to study chapter um, 16 the following week. And then it's Thanksgiving. So basically, we have three more chapters um, to cover 14, 13, and 16. And yes, we're going to skip um, the rest of the chapters we have. So my goal is for all of my classes to finish up before Thanksgiving. So then you have the Thanksgiving week and also the week after Thanksgiving to work on your term papers because I want you guys to ace your papers. So then you have enough time to finish up everything. Uh, just be focused on that. You probably have just discussions to um, write and um, um, no basically assignment on connect so you can be just focused on your papers um, and remember that the paper is due on a Friday after Thanksgiving um, so it's December 3rd on a Friday okay and then after that you have a week to kind of or two weeks to review the materials and then you are going to take the final exam so everything will be done in terms of the course materials before Thanksgiving, okay? So we're almost there, hang in there. Chapter 13, chapter um, 16 are kind of shorter, at least I'm keeping them short. So we're not gonna cover all the sections in chapter 13 and 16, you will see. I kept them very short, so stick to my notes. Chapter 14 is a little bit longer um, because we cover like, lots of definitions and um, terminologies. Um, so this chapter is about money, the structure of the monetary system, and the structure of the Federal Reserve, what the Federal Reserve basically do, what are the um, basically um, monetary policies for the Federal Reserve, what are the tools that the Federal Reserve basically has. And then in chapter 13 and chapter 16, we'll see basically how the federal government and also the Federal Reserve can deal with recession and inflation, okay? So chapter 13, chapter 16 um, are kind of related to chapter 14 and chapter 12, okay? So make sure you review these two chapters when you um, study chapter 13 and chapter 16. Um, I'm not gonna keep this video that long, Definitely watch my um, other video where I talk over the notes. Um, so there are so many terminologies. Do not skip them. Like, what is money? What are the functions of money? You will get questions on the final. And you definitely don't want to lose point because they're easy, really easy uh, kind of concepts. Um, I'm just going over the notes quickly um, here just to make sure to remind you um, about um, important um, things here. So um, you need to know the structure of the Federal Reserve. Of course, I'm not gonna ask you how many, um, for instance, uh, members the Board of Governor has. You need to know that as a, as a citizen, it's just good general kind of information for you, but I'm not gonna ask it on the test, but you need to know the overall structure of the Federal Reserve. Um, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, for instance, what are the um, um, responsibilities uh, that he has? What is FOMC, Federal Reserve um, um, Open Market Committee, what they do? Um, you need to know, um, you need to know um, what we mean by um, money market. Money market is very, very important. I kind of brought the money market from another chapter because you are going to need it to kind of understand uh, the monetary policy in uh, chapter 16. So I kind of combined chapter 12 and I think it's, um, sorry, chapter 14 with, I believe it's chapter, um, 18, I can't, I can't remember. Um, it's about money market. So I want you to pay attention to the money market. Part. Um, because we talk about demand and supply in the money market. So it's kind of similar to chapter three or chapter 12. Chapter 12, we talked about aggregate demand, aggregate supply. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to um, look into the demand for the money market. We will look into the supply for the money market. Um, it's, it is a little bit different, but the concept is still the same. You will see that, that we have the typical shape for the money, um, sorry, for the demand for money. 
but you will see that we have kind of a unique shape for our supply. Our supply is not um, upward slope anymore. You will see that we have a vertical supply. And the reason is that the Federal Reserve um, is in charge of um, controlling the quantity of money in the market. So the Federal Reserve is the only authority that can change the supply of money. So at the given time, the supply of money is fixed, no matter what the interest rate is in the market. So we have a vertical um, a money supply, okay? So that's, that's a big difference. And that's something that I want you to pay attention when you study the uh, money, money market. Another thing is in chapter three and chapter 12, when we were talking about demand and supply, we were trying to figure out the relationship between the quantity demanded with price or the quantity supplied with price. The price in this market, however, in the money market is interest rate, okay? That's another difference. But we still have a price, but that price is interest rate. And it's the nominal interest rate. What's the difference between nominal and real interest rate? So we talked about nominal GDP and real GDP. So you're kind of familiar with uh, the, the, the concept of nominal and real. But remember, when we talk about nominal interest rate, we're basically talking about um, interest rate that has some sort of inflation in it, okay? So when you open a, let's say, saving account and the nominal interest rate, the interest rate that the bank tells you is, let's say, 5%, okay? So that 5% is not the actual return that you're getting on your money if you open a saving account, because inside that 5%, we have inflation, okay? So if the inflation rate is 2%, then the real interest rate that you are getting, your real benefit um, or the real money as you are make, going to make on your money by opening that saving account is just 3%. It's not the 5%. It's 5%, which is your nominal interest rate minus the 2%, that was your inflation rate. So the real interest rate then is just 3%. Make sense? So the price that we have in the money market is this nominal interest rate, okay? So when we define our demand and supply, we're looking into the relationship between the quantity of um, quantity demanded of money and the nominal interest rate, same thing for supply. But again, the shape of the supply, you will see that is different. And then of course, we again put them together, the demand and supply to define our equilibrium. It's important to understand changes in supply and demand again in this market because we're going to need it in future chapters in monetary policy chapter 16. So you will see that we talk about shifting the demand and supply again in this market. But um, the major difference is we're not going to talk about complex cases as we had um, in chapter three. We're just going to keep the demand fixed. We're going to shift the supply um, or we're going to um, keep the supply fixed and we change or shift the demand. OK. Um, because, again, we need to look into the changes in demand and supply, because then we're going to talk about how the Federal Reserve is able to fix the market using its um, uh, policy tools, okay? Um, uh, what else? Um, I put, so I, I guess I put the theory of money, or maybe I did not. If I did the theory of money, I should have checked before talking here. Uh, if you see the theory of money in this chapter, just to skip it, you're not going to get any question on that, but I believe I deleted that part before I post the lecture notes, but I did it like at the beginning of the semester because I set up everything for you guys at the beginning of the semester. So I believe that I deleted that part. If I did not, you can skip it, okay? So that's pretty much it. To study this chapter in kind of depth, try to understand, especially the, the rest, the, except the money market, the rest of the chapter is honestly just concepts definitions that you have to memorize, like the structure of the federalism, you need to memorize those parts. The only part that you kind of need to think a little bit and digest it a little bit is the money market. So focus on that part. If you understand the money market, then you will understand how the Federal Reserve policy tools work, how the Federal Reserve is able to change the interest rate, for instance. Watch the video, as I mentioned, that I talk over the notes. I explain more about it um, there. I know it's long, but be patient and just, just watch it. Um, 
And again, it's kind of important to understand the money market for also um, monetary policy chapter, chapter 16, all right? Um, so do the homework from this chapter. As I mentioned, hang in there. Uh, we are going to cover um, two more chapters and then we are done with everything, okay? And try to finish up um, all these um, um, assignments we have before Thanksgiving, then you're basically done with the course materials. You can just be focused on um, your paper. Try not to miss anything. As I said, we're almost done uh, with everything. So try not to miss any homework. Um, keep your homework grade high, focus on your paper. And trust me, um, you can easily ace the term paper and it will boost your grade. Um, it will help you down the road. Um, we have a few more homework. Um, I believe one more discussion or maybe two more discussions. I'm not sure I, I should check. Um, term paper, final, then done. Okay, so there's still uh, room for you to uh, improve your grade. 20% um, goes to your paper. So that's why I'm giving you two weeks almost two weeks to finish up everything for your paper. Uh, one last thing, if you want to change your topic, do not change it, change it um, over Thanksgiving break or the week that you're submitting your, your paper. It's just too late. Right now, if you feel like that you don't like your topic for any reason, or you did your research and you cannot find enough materials for it, this is a time to change it. And just let me know because I keep track of your topics. Let me know if you want to change it but do not change it last minute, okay? Then you are not gonna um, end up with a good paper, all right? Trust me, and when I read your papers, I can tell if you spent weeks um, doing your research about it and writing it, editing it, or you just wrote it the night before, okay? That I can, I, can, I, I know that. Um, that's pretty much it, till next time. Let me know if you have any questions.